So this gets to the question, if the United States is not that democratic, what is it? Um, and I'm, I'm not talking about the, the saying that you often hear, the United States is not a democracy, it's a republic. And then there's some contention over what democracy means, what republic means. But I'm saying something more simple. I'm saying that the United States is a partial democracy. It has democratic elements to the political structure, and it has anti-democratic elements in the political structure. These stem from way back in the time of the founding of the country. The U.S. Constitution, uh, if you remember history, uh, came several years after the American Re Revolution had been won, and part of the intention of the people who wrote the Constitution and worked to get it passed was to limit the state governments from becoming too responsive to the general public. They feared democracy. They thought democracy meant, in a sense, mob rule, or at least the majority intruding on the rights of the minority, and the particular minority they were interested in was not a racial or ethnic minority. It was those who have significant amounts of property. So they were trying to protect the right of property from encroachments by the majority of the non-wealthy public. Uh, read James Madison's Federalist Number 10 in the Federalist Papers and you'll get a sense of how that thinking went back then. And there's a host of features in the Constitution that make it difficult for majorities to um, express their will through the government structure. For one thing, as we can witness day to day, there's a lot of blockage points to stop legislation from being passed. If you leave the status quo, the status quo already favors the wealthy. If you want to benefit an ordinary people, you're going to have to change things, and it's very hard to get things changed. If you get it through the House of Representatives, it can be blocked in the Senate. If you get it through the Senate, it could be vetoed by the President of the United States. So it's just a structure that's meant to impede uh, ease of changing the direction of government. Of course, when you think of democracy, too, you think a lot about voting rights. And from the beginning, not everybody had the right to vote. Not only were women excluded, and of course, slaves and black people in general, but a lot of states with their um, eligibility laws excluded people without much wealth. There were uh, standards where you had to have a certain amount of property or pay a certain level of taxes before you actually had the right to vote. So over time, we've seen things adjust. Uh, some movements to expand democracy, which have been fruitful, expanding the vote to more people, trying to make voting easier. And there have been movements against democracy where, we, uh, where people have impeded the right to vote and tried to make it harder. And I'm not just talking about the current struggle between Democrats and Republicans, Republicans over this. I'm also um, not depicting the Democrats necessarily as the good guys. I think the biggest obstacle today is in our electoral laws that maintain a two-party system. As long as you have just two parties, you're, it's going to be hard to get things done.